Hey everybody. Today I just wanted to talk a little bit about leasing property through Furnish Finder once you get a actual booking inquiry. Because I had a hard time trying to like do it for the first time, I wanted people who maybe just got a booking inquiry for the first time to kind of understand the process because it can get kind of clunky quickly. So you will get on Furnish Finder, you get tenant leads, um, both matched and unmatched. I typically will send them a message if there's something I can work with them on um, to try to get them. So a lot of my unmatched leads, I already have somebody in the property for the dates because I use Airbnb as well. So it's a little tricky uh, if the dates, you know, if I'm not going to have the property, then I'm not going to have the property. So then there's really no point in messaging an unmatched lead. Um, I also like if it's just a single traveler looking for a single room, I rent my whole property. I don't rent a room. Uh, so I typically don't respond to them either. But if I see somebody that's like three people, but their budget's a little lower, something like that, I may respond to them and be like, hey, look at my property, even though it's a little more expensive. I still don't come down on price. Um, but at least I get some looking at the property, possibly. Maybe they're, they'll up their their limit they'll spend. Anyway, I ended up getting uh, an actual booking request, which is a lot better than a tenant lead because that means they actually want to stay in my property. But then it was like frantic mode because there's so much you have to do. Uh, and all I've ever done on this property was rent it out on Airbnb. And Airbnb is like super easy, right? Like they go on, they book, Airbnb collects the payment, they check in, you go set a code on the door, you set a code on the alarm, whatever. And then they check in, they check out, Airbnb sends your money. Every once in a while, you might hear from the Airbnb app, like something that the tenant has an issue. But generally speaking, like they're there for 30 days or so, and, and that's fine. I do monthly leases. That's all I do on Airbnb is monthly rentals. So um, the problem with Airbnb is the booking fees. Like the, It's crazy to me that people go on Airbnb and pay what they pay uh, when they could go on Furnish Finder and literally pay for a furnished property for the same period of time a lot less um, because of Airbnb's fees. I mean, they pay a booking fee, I pay a booking fee, they pay a cleaning fee, blah, 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 through Airbnb. Furnish Finder, I paid $100 to list my property. There's no cost to the person to book through Furnish Finder. There's no cost to me except for that $100 every year. Um, and then Furnish Finder, you know, this particular tenant was for like three months. So that's even better because... Now I've secured the property for three months. I'm not going to have to worry about it. The uh, flip side of that is you have to have a lease. And so Furnish Finder provides a link to KeyPass. And KeyPass is is good. Or I'm sorry, it's KeyCheck, not KeyPass. KeyCheck. Yeah, they, they allow you to go to KeyCheck. And uh, they, they link with KeyCheck so you can import your property from Furnish Finder, things like that. So anyway, real quick walkthrough of what I had to do because it, it was confusing. So I got the tenant lead. Sorry, it wasn't a tenant lead. I got the booking request. I had to go to KeyFinder. I sent a request for screening through... Sorry, it's KeyPass. Let me look up what it is real quick. KeyCheck. KeyCheck. Goodness. Okay. So I went, <laughs> I went to KeyCheck. And on KeyCheck, I sent... The emails on Furnish Finder, I took that email, I put it in key check, and I sent a tenant screening to that email, and I selected for the tenant to pay for it. So the tenant pays like $30, $35, I think. It runs a credit check. It's a soft inquiry, so it doesn't hurt their credit, but you get a crap ton of details, right? You get their whole credit report. You get their score. You get anything they're past due on. You get anything they're current on. Like, you can see everything. This particular tenant I had... Didn't have a fantastic credit report, but it like most of the problems were old and they were pretty current on their new stuff. So, you know, you kind of got to, you got to know how to read credit reports. We can talk about that separately. Um, anyway, they had no evictions. If they have an eviction, they're automatically disqualified in my book. Uh, and they had no criminal history, so that's also good. Um, so, yeah. So, they pay for that. Key check returns all that to you. Um, and then off you go. So then the next thing you have to do is get a lease. Well, KeyCheck offers a lease subscription. They also offer a document signing service. And as of the making of this video, I want to call out those are completely separate. So if you want to e-sign your leases, which I recommend, 
having your leases e-signed. I believe e-signing is actually better than pen signatures because of the audit trail that you have. If you want to e-sign your lease, then you want to use the free lease subscription in KeyPass, KeyCheck, whatever the hell they're called, KeyCheck. Have it make your lease because it makes state-specific leases, and that actually is linked uh, by Furnish Finder. So you can go to Furnish Finder on your dashboard and to the left, and then select state-specific leases, uh, and that will help you generate a lease. And then you can edit it a little bit, read through it and edit it. There's some stuff you had to edit. I had to edit like the rent schedule. Um, there was like some some provision about they don't have to ensure the contents of the property. They're also not liable. Like I deleted, they're also not liable. I thought that was kind of a weird thing to say. Like they don't have to carry insurance, obviously, on the contents. But if they damage something, I mean, they're liable. So I didn't understand why it was there. Anyway, I made small edits. I downloaded the PDF. You don't want to use KeyCheck's document service, though, with that lease. So if you use their document service, it's going to take you through an interview process, and it's going to actually create a completely different lease. And you can't edit that lease. And I didn't like that lease. Um, I mean, it was an accurate lease for my state, but it just wasn't good. Um, I had written one already. What I thought I could do was just write one in the lease subscription, go over to the document thing, upload the PDF, and have them sign it. That doesn't work. So what I did was I went ahead and used Furnish Finder's state-specific lease, which takes you to key check, which walks you through creating a lease, which allows you to edit it if you don't like exactly the way it's written. I did that. Um, you might want to have your attorney review it. I didn't because I've done tons of leases, so I, I pretty much know what needs to be in them. I edited it, I downloaded the PDF, and then I went over uh, to dot loop, which is at dot loop.com. And dot loop.com, you can just add your property, and then you can upload the PDF, you can plop in where you want your signatures and who to do it, and then you share it with the email addresses and specify what role that those persons have. And then they can e-sign it. And then once they e-sign it, you sign it. And then you have a signed lease. So it was really easy. But I had to figure all that out. So that's why I made this video. So again, the process is you get a booking request on Furnish Finder. You immediately go to KeyCheck. You do a tenant screening with the email address that you get from Furnish Finder. They pay for that. You review it. If you're good with them, go back to Furnish Finder, go on the left-hand side. There's a, there's a menu on the left-hand side, and under one of the main menu items, there's state-specific leases. Click that. Have that generate your lease. Edit it so that it says everything you want it to say or doesn't say what you don't want it to say. Download the PDF. Go to dotloop.com, add your property in dotloop.com. By the way, dotloop.com is completely free. Add your loop, loop, they call it a loop, which is your property. Add your property, upload your PDF, go through your PDF and indicate where there's signatures and dates and who's supposed to sign it. You'll figure all that out on dotloop.net. If you have a brain, it's easy. Uh, and then you just share it through email and then it takes care of the signatures. Um, I actually found that two of the property managers I've used actually also use dot loop. Uh, I just figured that out today. So it's obviously a very highly used platform. It's like a DocuSign, but it's free. Uh, I don't think unless you have a ton of properties, I don't think you really have to pay because it looks like you pay per loop and a loop is a property. Um, and so unless you have more than nine properties, you could submit several leases for the same property, as far as I can tell, without having a premium account. So anyway, that's what I wanted to share. I found it difficult, and I kind of watched a video last night. It was like 20 minutes long on how to actually get a lease uh, done, and it, it was it wasn't like it didn't walk through all this stuff. It walked through like very high level, like how to list on Furnish Finder, how you know what tenant leads are, what booking requests are, how you want to get a lease, how to get your payment. Ultimately, key check or whatever the heck it's called, um, the one that, that uh, you do the background check through, 
they offer a way to do payments and the person that owned the house before me, they use key check for payments. But I talked directly to the tenant that is prospective tenant that has to sign the lease and they pay their current furnished finder th landlord through Venmo. I think that's easier. So I'm just going to go with the Venmo payments uh, rather than using the key check payment because kind of like everything else on key check, I found the payment to be a little tricky um, it, they're checking in on the 5th and they're checking out on the 10th. Uh, and so the way that it wanted to prorate the rent, it, it made sense, but I felt like it was confusing and I didn't want to send that to my pr prospective tenant. I felt like my way was much better as I had them pay a prorated rate for the first month since they're checking on the 5th and a prorated rate in the last month since they're checking on the 10th. Whereas key check, key pass, whatever the hell it was called, they kind of prorate it. They charge on the first of the month and then they kind of prorate it. I also split up the deposit because it's a $700 security deposit. But to take the property off of Airbnb, I wanted $200 up front uh, and then the rest when they move in. So I didn't want to charge them $700 five months before they move in. So um, I wanted to have that broken up and I couldn't find a way to do that in KeePass uh, unless I, I charged like a key check, whatever the heck it's called. Um, I couldn't find a way to do that. I mean, you can, there is a way to do it, but it was really complicated. So they're going to pay me via Venmo, much easier. So generate the lease there, do the tenant background check there, use dot loop for your signatures and you'll have a signed electronic lease and hopefully you get a lot of bookings through Furnish Finder because Furnish Finder, in my opinion, is much better than Airbnb especially for the person booking. Um, yeah, it's just much better for the person booking. I wish no, more people knew about it uh, because it is much better for them. At any rate, uh, that's it. Thanks.